Today on Toy Habits, we are looking at the defender of Castle Grayskull, the protector of Planet Eternia, and the guardian of the entire universe. And the man who bit it in the first episode of the Masters of the Universe Revelation Netflix series, He-Man. And before we get into the review, be sure to give it a like and subscribe to the channel so you can be alerted to the latest reviews, news, and episodes when they drop. Hey everyone, welcome back to Toy Habits, and today we are taking a detailed look at the Masters of the Universe Revelation He-Man, his weapons and accessories, and making comparisons to his Masters of the Universe Classics version, so let's get right to it. And let's get down to business like we usually do and start off by looking at the box. And He-Man comes in the Masters of the Universe Revelation Masterverse box. And it is a gorgeous window display style box where you can see all of the accessories he comes with. And taking a look at the side of the box, you can see that He-Man has most likely just transformed into He-Man from Prince Adam as his Power Sword has summoned the powers of Castle Grayskull as illustrated here. And there's a very cool illustration of He-Man on the side of the box. He has a very determined look on his face and man, boy is he jacked. That bracer on his left arm is really amazing and he's gripping the Power Sword like there is no tomorrow and this illustration just looks amazing. And looking at the back of the box, you can see a really iconic illustration of He-Man and his power sword is definitely summoning the powers of Castle Grayskull that you see behind him. And he looks so fierce and he is so determined and he is on the move and going somewhere. And moving down the lower part of the box, you can also see the other figures that are in the line and it is Mossman, Skeletor and Evil Lynn. But really the prize back here is this fantastic illustration. And now that the most powerful man in the universe is out of the box, let's first take a look at his head sculpt. And although this is not my favorite head sculpt, the head sculpt is not actually very bad and it is very nicely done. He's been given very strong facial features and I think the most strongest feature on him is his jawline. His chin is just really extended here and it's really accentuated by this divot here that they've carved in his head sculpt here and I think his eyes are really nicely done if you can catch them in the light. They're illustrated and painted really nicely and they kind of go along with the expression on his face. Now his hair sculpt is actually one of the best parts of his head sculpt. It has a nice layered and textured look to it. I do love the brown washing that they've given it and also you can see that it is a piece that's sculpted onto his head but there are parts that are left hanging down well below his chin so it gives him a really cool look. And if we turn He-Man around, you can see the way the hair falls and he's kind of given that classic chopped off look at the bottom of his neck there. And you can also see a lot of the brown washing and you can also see some of the layers here. So for example, we have a chunk of hair that is just left hanging out, which is nice. And you can see it kind of swept back along the side of his face there and also in other parts of his hair as well. So, I mean, as far as the head sculpt goes, not my favorite, but it's really decent. Now, ever since He-Man came out, I've always thought he had a very different head sculpt than what was portrayed in the cartoon, but since I've taken him out of the box, I've been going back to some of the still images that are online, and from certain angles, you can actually see that his action figure representation really looks a lot similar to how he appeared in the Revelation Netflix series at certain angles, but there are other angles that it really doesn't look that cartoon accurate. So in my opinion, I think He-Man should have came with an alternate head sculpt just to give him a little bit different look. Uh, I'm not super fond of this look. I've heard it called derpy. I've heard it called dorky. And I just think this is not a classic look that they want to give He-Man. And I know it's based on the cartoon, but I think his jawline can be a little bit fuller here. I think that's where my problem is with this head sculpt. So I think they kind of cut the angle of his chin a little too deep there. So I think if it extended maybe down to where his mouth starts and then it started cutting into his chin, I think it would look a lot more like the Netflix Revelation series version. And moving down to He-Man's torso, we can take a look at his chest armor and 
His chest armor is painted more in a matte metallic gray, which looks really, really nice. And it gives a very nice reflection to the camera and just a very nice overall look for the figure and his Armor in the center kind of harkens back to the Battle Armor He-Man H&M style chest plate that he was given here. And I unfortunately don't have the original Battle Armor He-Man, so this is the Origins Battle Armor He-Man, but the song remains the same. So you can also see that representation here in the chest plate. And you can also see the rivets that they've been giving him in all the four corners that are attaching his chest plate to this harness. And you can see the sculpting detail here uh, on his harness that goes under his arm. And you can also see some of the red detail here that goes over his shoulder. And if you turn him around, you can actually remove the harness and it comes completely off. But I'm not going to do that because I'm afraid I will never get it back on. And taking a closer look at He-Man's arm sculpts. Now, his arm sculpts are awesome. They have a lot of muscular detail that you can see in the forearm here, and his bicep looks really jacked. Not so much in the shoulder, but on his other arm, his bracer looks really, really awesome. And it's a removable part that you can just take off by removing his hand, and that just slips off really easily. But the bracer looks awesome, and I love the brown and golds and the way they play off of each other. And you can get a closer peek at the muscularness of this arm, and it looks pretty much exactly the same as the other arm. But one of my only gripes with the left arm is that this ball joint is so stiff. I actually can't even move it a lot here. It kind of goes up and down, but it really doesn't move from this position. So I'm going to have to see what I can do here without breaking it. All right, and I'm back. Okay, so really the trick is here is to just kind of line this ball joint here, kind of where his upper breast is on the left side. So if you kind of rotate that down, it is actually really, really stiff. And I am pushing really hard here. You can kind of see my thumbs, the way they're red and how hard I'm pushing, but I don't think it's going to break, but you do have to put a lot of tension on him just to pose him. And moving down to my second favorite part of these reviews, which is the gratuitous crotch shot, we do have to take a look at his loincloth. Now, his loincloth is brown with a nice black washing on it, and his belt is actually really nice and really big. I do wish that they had colored the detail on these jewel parts here on his belt, and also come to think of it on his wrist guards here. I just think he looks a little plain down there, but it's a more beefier loincloth than we're used to seeing on a He-Man figure. And if we turn him around, you can also see the loincloth hanging down between his legs there. And moving down to the legs, you can see that they are also super muscular and they have great detail there that they've given on the thigh and the knee and also the upper part of the calf that you can see peeking over his boot. But one of the major flaws with these super articulated figures is that they have really nice lines if you don't articulate them or move them. But once you start twisting them, they get really funky separations and all of the parts and pieces don't line up. But I think that's a sacrifice you make with these super articulated figures. And finally, moving down to the boots, they've given He-Man a very cool boot sculpt here, and I love the fur detail, and I actually do like that it's more of a darker brown instead of a yellow or a white. I think it just ties in with his loincloth a lot better, and you can see the wrappings that they have around his shins, which creates a very cool effect, and you can also see some of the dry brushing that they've done here just to bring out the detail in that particular piece here. And if we move down to the shoes, you can see some of the texturing that they've given the shoe and they have a strap that's going over the foot there. And I think it's just a really cool boot design for He-Man for the Revelation series. All right, and He-Man comes with a few accessories. So let's first start off by looking at his extra pair of hands. And he comes with two sets of gripping hands, one for the right and one for the left. But I'm just going to pick one up just to show you the detail here. And it is a standard hand, but I just want to show you that it is sculpted very nicely. It just has some realistic hand detail here. And you can kind of also make out the fingernails too. 
All right, and next up, let's take a look at his shield. And his shield is colored in a nice orange color here, and it kind of deviates from the reds that we've seen in the shields prior to this particular He-Man release. It's got really nice riveting detail, but my favorite part is actually in the back where you most likely aren't gonna see this. I love the way that they've done this shield design here where they have more of an open part here that attaches to the back so his forearm can fit in there and his hand can grip it. So it's very different than the Masters of the Universe classics design where it just clips on. And I think they've done a really nice job with making some just much needed design changes with these shields. And one extra added benefit that I'm hoping is that we don't get a lot of paint chipping that might happen when you put the shield on and off of the wrist. So maybe that's an extra bonus. And another detail that I want to mention, just comparing the classic shield with the new Revelation style shield, is that the Revelation style shield is a much rounded shield than we've seen before. So a lot of previous He-Man iterations, it's pretty much been a flat shield. And I really love the way that they've made this new shield a lot rounder. And it kind of resembles the Masters of the Universe origin shield, where they put a little bit of roundness and kind of bulkiness in the shield just to make it pop out a little bit. So I'm really digging the way that they're redesigning these shields. All right, and finally, let's take a look at He-Man's Power Sword. And the paint app for this Power Sword is a dark gray matte with a metallic silver blade, which these two colors complement each other very nicely. And it just gives some definition to the Power Sword. And it doesn't look like it's just one solid sword. The hilt is in a brown wrap and it also has that dark gray matte coloring to it. So overall, this is probably one of the thinnest power swords that I've seen. And embarrassingly enough, I cannot find my Masters of the Universe Classics power sword. So I am going to use Skeletor, but hey, it provides a nice color contrast here. So you can kind of see where they've deviated and just made a totally new design of the power sword, but still retained that classic nature. So it's a lot slimmer. It's a little bit longer and that might be because these figures are seven inches. So maybe that's where the difference is there. And one cool thing that I noticed with his shield while I was messing around with him is that you can actually put his closed fist through this hole here in the back of his shield and he can actually hold his shield pretty well in his in his closed fist hand, which is very cool because I actually do like the way this bracer looks on his forearm and I don't want the shield hiding this bracer here. And here's how the shield fits on the hand that it was probably intended to. And I'm guessing this bracer is actually to protect him from any shield backlash that he might get, but you can't see the cool bracer. So, but I mean, it actually does look cool when you see him holding it on the other side from the other angle. And here is He-Man geared up with his shield. And you can also see that although there is not an actual space to hold his power sword, it does fit nicely on the backside of his armor. So you can definitely stow it there when it's not in use. And here is He-Man all geared up with power sword in hand and his shield on his left arm. And he actually looks really, really cool in this pose. But unfortunately, the wrists were not given a vertical hinge and so he can't really raise aloft his magic sword to summon the powers of Grayskull, but I can show you how you can make it work. All right, and given the limited articulation in the wrist, you can actually raise his arm pretty straight up, but what you're gonna have to do is just kind of remove the sword from his grip here and just kind of let it rest between his thumb and his fingers there. So you can kind of make it look like he's summoning the powers of Grayskull, although not perfect. It's actually pretty darn cool. All right, and comparing the Revelation version to the Classics version, you can see that this Revelation version of He-Man is a little bit taller than the Classics version. I wish I was a little bit taller. No, I'm not gonna sing it. All right, now I'm not gonna belabor this comparison because these are two different figures from two different generations, but I just wanted to show you just some of the differences and similarities here in the sculpts. And as you can see, the Revelation He-Man is a much lighter, more airy version, I would say, of He-Man. He's just given a more 
docile look than the fierce He-Man in the classic look in his head sculpt. And you can also see the change in armor that they've given He-Man here in the classics version. He is given more of that cross symbol. And in the Revelation version, he is given the kind of H&M combination hearkening back to the battle armor He-Man from Days of Yore. And you can also see that the wrist bracers are present in both figures and the classics version is a much more subdued look and sculpt than the removable part that they've given the revelation figure here and you can also see some of the loincloth detail and it definitely hangs a lot lower and it's much bulkier in the revelation version than the than the classics version and you can also see that the classics version belt is bejeweled with some dark red accents where he-man in the revelation version is just given a straight gold belt and finally, moving down to the boots, you can see that the Revelation version is just given a more bulkier fur than the Classics version. And you can also see that in the Classics version, the straps also kind of wrap around his shoe, where in the Revelation version, they stop at his boot here, kind of where it fits into the heel of the shoe. And you can also see that He-Man in the Revelation version is given more of a loafer style shoe than the more ugly looking boot that the classic version of He-Man has here. I have to admit, when I first saw this version hit the shelves, I was very turned off on the line in general, but this figure has grown on me. It's taken me some time to get used to the new figure designs, and with that said, we now have a He-Man that mostly resembles his portrayal in the Masters of the Universe Revelation Netflix series. After attending PowerCon 2021, the newer figures coming out have re-energized me on the line and now I'm all in. What are your thoughts on this figure? Let us know in the comments below and thanks for tuning in to Toy Habits.